All right, we're back with another tutorial. This time, how to make an asteroid belt. Um, I'm going to show you how you can use end particles, so the uh, asteroids will collide with each other. We emit them from a curve, and use that curve as a volume field, so we can drive their orbits using the instancer, so we can get some models on them and uh, do some stuff within the instancer, so our small asteroids behave differently from the big ones. So to we'll start off I'll reference in some asteroid assets which is my planet I've textured you know with a ramp kind of Saturn-y and then I have 10 asteroid models right there so to start off, let's create our curve. You can scale it out to roughly the size of the asteroid belt you want. Right there is cool. And we'll go to end particles, create emit from object, make sure it's curve. I'm going to set this up really high and then change the max count of my particles later but so we want a lot of particles no speed and create and since they are n particles they have the nucleus node which has gravity so I'll go and turn gravity to zero and make sure wind speed is at zero too so now we get a whole lot of particles. You can see they're already colliding with themselves. Um, so I'm going to go in and change under the emission attributes, change my max count to see what a thousand looks like. That's pretty cool. Alright, so we want to randomize their birth a little bit so they're not all so uniformly uh, spawned on this curve. So we can write our first expression, get our expression editor out, our animation editor's expression editor popped up over here. We can say the position, we'll take whatever it was and add to it in each axis with a random value. So position, take whatever it was, plus a random value for x between negative 2 and 2. For y, we don't want it to be too random, so we'll make it a lower value of negative 0.5 and 5. And for the z, I'm just going to use the same values as x. So I'll copy that over. And now when we play, oops, something happened in my expression. Oops, I said 0.5 and 5 negative 0.5 and 0.5 now it'll be a little bit better alright so now we can get it moving first we'll select our curve go up to fields make it a volume curve and a volume curve is the exact same just as a volume field but it's just based on a curve so if I were to move or translate my curve, the field follows, and since it's the emitter, the asteroids will follow it too. So we want our volume field to encompass our particles. So with the field selected, we can find its um, volume control attributes and turn its section radius up to something like three and a half just something big enough to keep all of our particles inside of it 
Um, and since when I made the field I didn't have a particle selected, they aren't connected. So if I hit play, nothing's going to happen. So if I go to Window, Relationship Editors, Dynamic Relationships with my particle selected, up here in Fields I want to connect the Volume field and you can tell it's connected because it turned pink. And now when we hit play, it's probably hard to tell because of the frame rate. If you watch this purple one right here, it goes, it moves. But if you let it play long enough, you see they'll spin out. That's because the conserve is on, and conserve is a lot like inertia. So um, we'll turn that off. If we turn it off, it gets 100% of its motion from any fields or forces connected with it. So we want, under dynamic properties, we'll turn it to 0.5 that way if anything happens to collide it'll keep enough conserved so it can at least move away from the other one so it goes a little slower but nothing's spinning out if you want it to go faster back in our volume field we can go down to the volume speed attributes and along axis is just along the curve it's based on a round axis is like these green circles so you can get it to spin around there and away from axis is either towards or away from the curve so you can use a negative value to draw it towards the curve so I'm going to speed it up just a little bit see what 2 looks like and that's pretty cool All right. So now, if we select our particle and get our outliner back out, we can change the mass so that any particles with less mass will be more easily affected by the field. So we'll come down here and say mass equals a random value between 0.4 and 1. We'll edit that. Now again it's probably going to be hard to see because of the frame rate I'm recording at. But some are starting to move faster than other ones around them. So, one attribute that's already connected for you is radius PP, which is just how big each particle is. So, you can control that. There's a ramp that you can connect to age so they get bigger over their lifespan. But I'm going to break that connection and make a new expression for it that says radius PP is equal to mass. So now any particle that gets a low mass will have a small radius. So when we re rewind, it's a little bit big. So what we can do is just multiply this by, see what, half. Half of mass looks like. So everything should shrink by half now. And yeah, that's good enough. Alright, so now we can start adding our geometry. If I select all my geometry in the outliner, control click particle, end particles, instancer. Now we have models on our particles. So to um, randomly choose between them, I'll go in and add all the custom attributes I'm going to need to get them to be different, rotate faster, and scale. So I'll use custom index to choose which model to use. Use 
just in the scale it's a vector to scale them just in the orient to spin them in their different axis and rotation speed to add to that orientation we give them Alright, so if we make a creation expression and if we type in custom index equals random between 0 and 9 would be 10. So I added 10 just so we can get that extra number. Um, we're going to want the custom scale. To equal radius and the orient to be a random value between 0 and 360 in each axis. Just copied and paste this because it's a pain to type. So now we can say, we can set up a conditional statement that if the mass is low, we want the rotation speed to be high. And if the mass is high, we want it to be lower. So I'm just copying and pasting what I had before and I'll go through it line by line. So if the particle mass is less than or equal to 0.5 which is just above our lowest value we want the rotation speed to be a really high number either going one way or the other if the mass is larger than or equal to 0.8 which is just below our max mass of 1 we want the rotation speed to be really low one way or the other and if it's not either of those we can say the rotation speed is something like 5. So now I have to go in and connect everything in my instancer so scale. We'll use custom scale, index, custom index, and rotation custom orient. So if I turn off our end particles and hit play, you should see random asteroids oriented differently but they're not rotating over time to change that we can just say custom orient take whatever it was and add rotation speed to it and now when we rewind we can see that some are spinning fast, some are spinning slow. Just to make it more apparent, I'm going to make our radius a little bit bigger. and change the extremes. Ooh. So it looks like radius is a sensitive value. a really sensitive value. Well since we changed mass and it's based on that we're gonna have to figure out the mass. So 
Let's see what two does. All right, so we're getting that big difference between really big ones and really little ones. You can see maybe that the little ones are moving really fast. The big ones are hardly moving at all. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. So obviously it's obviously kind of a chunky effect. You could go in and tweak the count and all the sizes and stuff. But you should have a grasp of what you need to know to do a similar effect.